The way that Madonna does her show is it is rigorous. It is rigorous every single day. There is a schedule that's three run-throughs a day. Whether they have a stage or not, they'll pretend like they do. And the set list is made and the set list is stuck to. And by the time she gets to the first show, she knows where she's going to take every single step for the rest of the 93 shows on the tour. I mean, she is locked and loaded. Tate Towers started here in America in about 1979. It was a lighting company at first, and it kind of morphed into a staging company, but it grew exponentially. Tate Towers has always represented the best in the business. What we're building either enables the show to happen or not. We thrive on complications. 25 years ago, musicians were making money selling records, and now they're making money selling seats. And that's why we're making stage sets. Like any organization, we have our moments, we have our drama. It's full on, because there's a deadline that we're up against all the time. There's no showing up a day late. In this business, you're only as good as your last show. When I first started on the Madonna project, some development had already been done by uh, some other guys here at Tate, and I remember my first thought was, God, I, I hope the scope of this project is reduced somehow. Madonna's a, a true 2012 project for that, us. We engineered some of it in Belgium, we built some of it in China, we engineered some of it in Vegas, we engineered it in Lidditz, we subcontracted lots of the manufacturing out. So we had places all over the world working and coordinating to get it done, and that's what it took to get the scale of that project out. There's a lot of stuff happening on it. You got a lot of custom video, a lot of custom mechanics, new software technology to make it work. It's neat. It's fully, it's pushing the envelope. Wherever she is in the world, we can facilitate her needs and we can do it at the drop of a hat. And that's really one of the, the key points about being a global company is just making that interaction for your clients. Where, wherever they are, you can do whatever they need. Madonna's vision is definitely uh, the most important part of the tour because nothing makes it out there without her loving it. I got one more piece to come up. This is where the fun starts. So my relationship with Jake Barry, uh, I'd gotten a lot of um, prior knowledge uh, from people about how, how Jake was uh, this intimidating guy back in the day. He, he's he's the, the tyrant of rock and roll. He, he'd strut around loadouts, uh, just losing his mind, grabbing forklift drivers, you know, trying to fire people on the spot. I, I don't know how much of that is true. <laughs> what, the truthful answer or what? Uh, we like to come in early so we can talk to the build and work out our fire lanes. We mark the stage, we mark the floor, and then we dump a shit pile of trucks down the other end, which is mostly all the tape stuff, the rolling stage. And then we'll start rigging and we'll then bring the tape automation. God, it sounds like the a lot of tape crap. Tape by Madonna, or Madonna by Tate, or something like that. Inside, put a stage right, stage left dasher, tell you all the way down, okay? If you look at the organizational chart of every tour, it really starts at the top with the production manager who then hires his people to put the show together. And really that show is broken down into departments. So Todd would be the head rigger, Ian would be the stage manager, Flory would be the head carpenter, there's a lighting crew chief. And in every one of those departments, they have people working underneath them and they're in charge of all the stage hands throughout the day to put the show together. This is still a very antiquated process with all the technology we have in this world. But you have to mark the floor out with a tape measure and chalk. It's old school. For how many points did you just say? 143. So 143 motors are going to be hanging from the ceiling. This is a map. 
I lay out the show where the points are. I tell them what type of motors go where. Bring in all the steel. The head rigger and I go through and we make decisions based on his knowledge of the building and my knowledge of the show. We work together, mark the floor, and basically what we do is we put the laser up into the roof, figure out where the beams are, and then we do the math to figure out what we're going to do wire rope-wise to be able to make the connections to do to have the point hit on the floor using the beams that are in the seat. So this is a split 15, so it's a 10 and a 5 with a shackle that connects, it goes around the beam. And then the leg is a 40 foot long uh, leg using two 20 foot pieces of steel to do an apex. This is two 30 foot pieces of steel in the leg and then a 5 basket. The 5 basket goes around the beam. So then they go over there, they get the correct amount of steel and shackles and all that sort of and they come over here and they build it. So you'll see all the wire rope at each one of the points. Guys will go up in the roof, drop in a rope, tie the wire rope off to the rope, they lift it up chains on the bottom of it, it goes up, and then hopefully it hits the point. Basically, the points are going to hold up the lighting rig, they're going to hold up the video, and it all has to fall exactly in the right place over the stage set, because all the lights are cued, everything's focused, everything has to be in the same place relative to each other every single night. sit back and watch this show come in. You grab it by the throat and drag it in the building. You don't sit back and watch this show come in. You grab it by the throat and drag it in the building. Jake has certainly pioneered this level of touring and, and there's a lot of people that worked with him and that have worked for him that have now adapted that, that kind of level. Um, but it comes out of his model and his work ethic. And it's just amazing what his brain can retain. He is a human spreadsheet. He walks around. He, you, you could ask him today to recite the crew calls, how much the union costs, what the building rental is, how many trucks are coming in here, what kind of electricity we're using. He will recite to you facts and figures that would just blow your mind. And he could do it from 12 years ago on Metallica show and still remember what buildings they played and in what order and how he unloaded the trucks. I mean, it goes on and on and on. And so. He's using all of that history, but it's so fresh to him, and, and he uses all of that information to get him through a day like today and make it look easy, I, I think. I, it's pretty amazing that he makes it look easy. Look at all that shit down there. Do you need the eyes in your back of your head on a Madonna loading? Down stage left. So this is probably worth getting on camera, huh? This is a... Uh... This is fucking relaxation here, aren't you? <laughs> Stress relief? Stress relief, yeah. I ran out of pills today. <laughs> I enjoy doing this, you don't have to think about it. <laughs> Upstate center section is very crowded in here, so we build it by sections. And every time we have a little bit of room, we squeeze another section until we get everything built. Some of our clients are particularly supportive about women being in the industry. Jake Berry, for example, who's the production director of Madonna, actively encourages having women in his team. My name is Flory Turner, and I'm uh, the head carpenter of the Madonna tour. That's a tough world to enter into as a chick. She has risen to the, to the top. I mean, she is the cream of the crop at the moment in terms of putting up with all the bullshit it takes to deal with a tour like this and deal with 30 trucks of shit. We're working with males, so males have a lot of ego. And some of them, they don't know me. So they come across very male-like. <laughs> Yeah, so it's, it's, it's difficult, but after, you know, they, the new crews, after they start knowing me and, you know, what I've done and how I work and everything, so they get, they get softer and they get better. The tapered fitting magnetic decking system, we call it a mag deck. The magnets up here are on the corners of the deck around on either side. 
And what they do is they immediately help locate it. They don't hold it together, but they locate it so that they get it into a position where he can lock it with the key. You know what the BFH is yet? When they slam it together, you want to make sure that everything's quite smooth at the seams because you can't have a cumulative error as you build the stage. If you're an eighth inch off here, big fucking hammer. If you're an eighth inch off here, by the time you get to the other side, you're two inches off. So it's crucial that you have a flush seam. And they're built to take a little bit of abuse and punishment with the BFH. Plus, she just likes doing it. It's not really that necessary. <laughs> My workout of the day. <laughs> Free gym in here, body by Jake. <laughs> body by Jake. magical now, isn't it? Like a little bit of uh, stage lighting. Just kind of coming to life right now. Here's a picture up there. Look at that. Look at, look at him up there. Look at the lazy swine. Look. See, that's what happens when you own the company. You get to pose on your stage. If they'll take this truss up now, or the stage will move forward and we'll build a bit more. There's such an art to building it, and you can see it happening here. It's all the stuff that we toil over in the office and all the stuff that we spend a huge amount of money on designing. You can really see the fruits of your labor happening here. Wait till you see the machines come in. Go, 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 go. What is going on here? Well, I mean, is, isn't there a piece that goes on the outside? Over this way, come on. Madonna has got a 200 axes of motion. If you know, any one of them goes wrong, we're in trouble. So my biggest fear is the risk factor that has generated, and it, we're not in control over it. It's become a very risky business, and our job, of course, is to dot every I, cross every T, and try to mitigate all of that risk and get it out, but you can only go so far. That scares the shit out of me. The biggest challenge uh, to make this happen right off the bat was the, uh, the matrix of LED lifts that's built into the stage. Originally, thought we would be building 60 of these, uh, these pylons with LED on four sides, and it was eventually scaled back to 36, which makes up the main portion of the performance surface, and each lift can come up out of the stage about eight feet, and uh, through all of those working together, you can make something that's any staging surface you want, like a Qbert, the, the old video game. You could tear things down in steps, you could have pylons rise out of nowhere, disappear. It looks awesome now, but the idea of making 40 machines that have to do that in such a short amount of time was, was very daunting, especially because of the nature of the way they're built into the stage. If there was a mechanical problem, we would not have been able to access most of the lifts to fix them. The lift matrix was the thing that we'd never done before. Uh, we, we pride ourselves on making the coolest shit around, and that was the new hotness. I'm plugging in all the power data and e-stop for all the matrix. Every lift has a set of cables. There are 36 lifts in total. Oh, no, no. Okay. And yeah. all their cables go back to a rack, which is in each corner of the system. And then those four racks get connected into one control system, which is beside this. We have three control points. The main one is out front, and there's an operator there who deals with that. Uh, this is the front of our setup. Basically, everything that moves on the stage is controlled from here. We're controlling 81 axes. There's 125 queues during the show. We, we all know in which queue we are involved. So every department, I'm not just talking about automation, but I mean everything that happens on the stage. So Mike is calling the queues. When I first started doing this, I was a basket case. You're opening up holes in the middle of the stage, and there's 10 dancers standing within two feet of it. From this perspective, looking straight on, you have no idea where they're at on stage, but with the overhead camera, even though you can see that they're outside the square that's marked, you still 
are a little hesitant given the go to, just to open up a hole because they're standing there. They trust that you're going to call it in that same spot every day. And you trust that they know that it, when it's going down, not to be there. Tours of this scale, um, the dancers that are hired are typically like veterans. Um, Madonna doesn't like to do that. She likes to take a few veterans, and then she likes to take people that have never been in this situation and pluck them out of their world where they're like the best, and then drop them into her world and say, okay, go for it. There's also a huge safety issue with the amount of people that you have dancing on the stage with elevators moving up and down. You have to make sure that everybody's on their mark all the time. And so there's got to be great communication down there. And they're all on headsets and they're all communicating like a Broadway show. And that is the most important thing. We have safety emergency plan for basically everything that could happen. Hopefully it's never going to happen. Lift cues and especially in the Matrix. Like, they go this, and if you miss your thing here, then you're on to the next, and you're, you're screwed. Yeah. Everybody has to be extremely aware of everything at all times. It is very dangerous. It's really it's very dangerous. dangerous. Like, any wrong move, somebody could become injured very easily because of how things move on the stage. Like, if you're under the stage, there are lifts that go down. If you're under that, it can crush you. Here we go, going into the world of Madonna. Hey guys, welcome, here we go, into the world of Madonna and the understage world of Tate Towers. Okay, what we do have here, we have some, our hydraulic system right here on the left-hand side, which is part of the slack line system that you'll see during the show where the uh, dancers are bouncing up and down on it. Coming over here onto the right-hand side is our, our monitor world. Somewhere through here, the audience will be during the show, right outside there, watching her on stage. And right behind us, we have some more Matrix, and on the right as well is another lift, which is the one that Madonna uses during the show here. We have three lifts exactly like the same here. Coming up right in here, all this area will be a dance room. It just looks like tents right now, but there will be lots of costumes, more quick change and more wardrobe spaces right here. 19 male dancers right here. This will be crazy. This will be like Grand Central Station during the show time. Running in and out, changing from costume to costume, through song through song. Okay, we have more stuff built by Tate. Again, more of those lifts, our Matrix lifts right here. Everything underneath the stage is built by Tate, and the stage itself structure is built by Tate. We love that guy. He's a good guy. We have two coal miners dollies on the front of the stage here. The one on the left is used for M, and the one on the right is used for the dancers. She'll basically get from the top part of the stage to the bottom part of the stage as quick as she can by just laying on this coal miner's dolly, and two crew will push you down instead of trying to run down like little chipmunks or whatever. It just takes so long. The underworld is crazy. It's choreography. It's all choreography. It, from the moment they start the show, what you see on top of the stage with all of the movements, it's just as set underneath the stage. They have certain paths that they have to go to get to their dressing rooms so that they can change their clothes and times so that they don't run into any of the crew that are getting to their next cues. It's all strategically mapped and placed in certain spots so that no one actually is like, there are several high levels of stress. There's failure of the machines at any given moment whether it's during the day and you can't do a sound check or it's even worse during a show and a gag or a song can't happen. There's so many axes of motion on a show like this, it's not unusual for something to go wrong. stage setup is always the same, but what goes on around the stage is different depending on the venue, how many rooms they've got, what the sizing is, so our production manager and our stage managers decide who's going to have what area in the building. I've ended up in the loading dock, so that's the only space left. They've given us a pipe and drape area, mostly for a bit of privacy, because I do do a bit of maintenance on the guns. Madonna throws the revolver and it occasionally skips over the stage and it ends up in the audience. So it's my job to make sure that we get that prop back. And while she's usually very consistent in where that thing goes, occasionally she'll have a moment and it skids off the wrong side of the stage. So suddenly I'm 
belting past security guys and trying to get things off the audience. They really like Madonna and they really want to take something home. <laughs> All the big props that you see is all flown in throughout the system right above us. You should probably get to see five motor, six motor chains coming in right now. Those guys will fly that's each of the props in throughout the show. During the show and on the stage right here, we have about 12 guys moving items around. We're always scared of missing the next cue. Well, now we're comfortable with what we do and we understand that we have this amount of time and we have this amount of pop song left to get it ready and into the next scene. Once it's used, it's taken down and broken away and put into a set car to be pushed over to a truck to be loaded into the truck during the show. So many good reveals in the show, but the first one with the, the confessional through the opening video walls is great. And I remember everyone's cheering, everyone's cheering, and a few seconds into the first song, the lift matrix actually kicks in and pylons rise up out of the stage and everyone around me shut up and it was fantastic. It's a moment that made it worthwhile. I, I realized how much everyone here had put into the process and I was just happy to be a part of it. It's so hypnotic, the way it moves on me, it's like the pulse of gravity right up under my feet. It's so erotic, this feeling can't be beat, it's coursing through my whole body, feel the heat, I got that burning hot desire. I just hope they have like a magical experience. Like I hope they're transported for two hours and they, I hope they just blink and two hours goes by. And it, it's, you're looking at, it's, it's art. She doesn't just do a show, she presents you a piece of art. these shows together in one day, you know, in hours. I mean, it just, it just hours, and we can do all these building and we, all these stages and stuff. It just, it makes me very, it makes me very proud of myself that I'm part of it. Look, you know, at the end of the day, when you do a show and the fans appreciate the artist, there's a little bit of you in that. You feel like I've given the show for a performer to give a great show with the crowd and the crowd are happy. And that's what it is. It doesn't matter whether you have a thousand lights, whether you have the world's largest video screen, whether you have more pyro or the biggest show. Is when the people come in to see the show, if they don't go away happy, they're not coming back. You see at the end of the night everybody's happy. That, that, that's pretty huge to everybody. If you looked at Madonna, for instance, and you see that show, and it's a fantastic show. But what did it take? It took months and months of planning and months and months of rehearsing and grief and tears. And it went on and on and on. Perfection, perfection, perfection. It takes that much. If it's late, it's taped, but it'll be great and it's worth the wait. So that's that, that's that amount. Of... That's so old. Like, we're not late anymore. I must have done 10 tours of them. They've been early this once. <laughs> okay?